a lot of oofs and chooks and all that kind of stuff. Would you look at this? This is a perfect wee find and it's just not far from my house and it is stunning. Absolutely beautiful. Perfect setup, perfect scenario here for getting the old cogs and the grey matter working to see how we can get the best image out of our Canon 5D. Uh, I've also got uh, lenses that I think really complement the Canon 5D Mark III. Um, it's a Tamron SP 24 to 70mm lens and I think it's just stunning and out of the 24 to 70 range, I looked at the Canon and I looked at the Sigma. The Sigma wasn't the best quality, especially around the edges. The Canon was a bit dearer, but it only shot down to f4, f.4. So, yeah, sorry, f4. But the Tamron, overall, the image quality was superb. Plus it shoots at f2.8 which combined with the Canon 5D Mark III uh, its low light capabilities of the camera already, the camera body this lens is just phenomenal and it, and it covers the, the focus range on the image compared to the Sigma, it covers everything the Sigma was kind of fluffy around the edges and a bit distorted and it just didn't look the best and it was a bit cheaper but this one was probably the middle price of the three the Tamron and yeah, for Canon only putting it at f.4 and this is f.28, it was a no-brainer. So I'm gonna, I'm gonna fire that one up, I'm gonna get it set up and then we're gonna see what we can do with a beautiful little bug drop like this. So, here she goes. What a machine. And uh, it doesn't break the bank. This whole setup is probably mm, in total. I was 800 pound for the body and maybe 300 pound for the lens and that's all you need obviously there's other lenses and everything like that you know all that story already but if it, this is kind of this is like a a general setup that complements each other so well that i just enjoy using it so much and i can't recommend it enough so i'll leave a link down below for you to see but yeah if you've got a 5d mark III or a 5d mark ii or a IV, get this lens i really do uh, rate it highly Right, so I've moved up the hill a wee bit, <clears throat> not far, just a couple of footsteps. It's given me a, a totally different angle, which I'll let you have a look at just now. As you can see, I've cut out the sky just about all together at the top. Yeah. And I've used this stone at the front here. Bit of it there as a foreground element so it looks beautiful why not take it two second stoppage i'm liking it it kind of makes it look like it kind of brings it into like a, a miniature world because i've zoomed into it it emphasizes the, the, the stone at the front anyway as my foreground element but it also closes everything in and it just gives it a, another worldly look like I don't know you could imagine I don't know like something magical like a fairy land or something like that it just the colours the greens and the oranges the couple of trees at the background just sticking up I just I love it absolutely love it
So just now I'm going to take a quick, a quick uh, two seconds just to tell you something else that I've been up to, as well as photography and general life stuff. Um, I've been learning Scottish Gaelic, and I've been learning it now for the past six months, and I've kind of fallen in love with it. It's a it's a dying language. It's one of the oldest languages in uh, Europe, but it's definitely dying out, and it's dying out quite quick. And I think with myself being Scottish, I've took it upon myself to try and learn it which is a bit difficult, but I think it is beneficial to kind of save in the language and the more people that I could maybe entice to do that would be a good thing because you don't want anything dying out, especially a part of something that you love so much like Scotland. So I'm going to start throwing in, remember I'm still learning myself, so uh, before anybody comments on my dodgy pronunciation and stuff like that, but I'm trying my hardest to spend about two hours a day because I do a lot of driving through the week. I spend about two hours a day learning this stuff on uh, Scottish Gaelic on YouTube. And it's just some of the words, it's just so Scottishy to say. And uh, I just think it's brilliant. And I think the more people that uh, learn it, the better. So I'm going to throw in a few words. And when I, when I do throw in a word that's in Scottish Gaelic, I will put the pronunciation up and then what it actually means, but I'll also mention what it means as well. And yeah, maybe you'll pick up a bit yourself and maybe you can use it in general day-to-day -day life. So yeah, that's what I'll be up to and I'm going to add it to my videos as well. So what better place to do it in some place like this? Beautiful wee place. So the Scottish word for beautiful is Bria. Bria. But to say very beautiful, it's Glee Vria. Glee Vria. And that's just what it is. Glee Vria. Very beautiful. Stunning. And there you go. There's your first wee word. You can use it for your wife or your children or places that you are. And you got to admit, there's a bit of romance about that, the way that's said. Glaveria. And I, honestly, there's heaps, <laughs> there's heaps of words that like... Well, there's one word I totally love. It's called Smyrnachuk. And it's pronounced Smyrnachuk. And that means thinking. And I just love saying it. Smyrnachuk. And I've been trying to pass it on to my kids and stuff like that as well. And I, I think it's just brilliant. Right, so camera's secure. And I'm just looking to see what I can actually catch maybe a wee bit cramp here to try and get a good camera angle for you guys to see but as you can see just now it's I've got the trees at the right hand side here staggered and then the water over here which balances the image diagonally if there's such a thing but if you're a photographer and you're into photography you'll know what I mean but I'm just not capturing the pool at the front and I don't know if I'm capturing enough water so I'm thinking about maybe changing the position altogether and maybe coming up a bit. It's all a bit of trial and error, but I'm trying to walk you through, you guys through it so you can kind of not just put your camera down. If you're new to photography, don't just put your camera down and think that you see a nice picture. And that's it. You've got to work the area. The more you work, the more you get out of it. It's uh, the same old rule. The harder you work, the more uh, fruitful it it is that, that, you, that you're doing <laughs> yeah you know what I mean work the area so yeah I like it I like what's there but I really think I need to be higher up right so I've got my camera set up and it's a bit of a dodgy precarious position but I think I've got the balance right of this picture. The only thing that's annoying me is the sky at the top. But I can maybe do something in post-processing with that. I could maybe add some orange kind of leaves or foliage or maybe a bit of green. I don't know. Just to get rid of that big white space. But saying that, using that white space at the top right hand side, as you can see, it's at the top right hand side of the image. I've balanced it diagonally down with the waterfall here and then everything kind of runs up to that space so you never know it might work in post-processing but 
It's an experiment, it looks good. I've got it at F20 and a shutter speed of 1.6 seconds just to get a wee bit of um, movement, smoothness in the water. Now don't be scared to go up your F range. I don't have my lens with me for getting a longer, ex longer uh, exposure. So F range is there, it's there for a reason, so use it. Right, time to move. Very carefully. I'll use my tripod as a walking stick, I think. Oh, oh dear. This has got disaster written all over it. No, maybe not. Check me go. Ah. I'm somewhere in the middle. Try to find myself again. But life is one big riddle. 